How is selective amnesia connected to autism? I guess we better find out. Welcome, and thank you so much for watching. I'm Orion Kelly, that autistic guy, and I'm all about providing validation and support for autistic people and their loved ones. Selective amnesia and its connection to autism. Let's start with what is selective amnesia. Selective amnesia is a complex memory phenomenon categorized by the inability to recall specific events, experiences, or details while retaining memory for other information. Okay, but how does selective amnesia actually look? Like, how does it manifest? Well, it, it manifests in so many different ways. But let's talk through some practical examples of selective amnesia. Memory gaps. Do you have a gap in your memory? Do you experience these kind of gaps in memories? Like you're aware of the event, but there's holes in it. These types of memory gaps that are especially related to specific life events, experiences, an example of selective amnesia. How about this one? Selective forgetting. What? This basically involves selectively forgetting emotionally distressing or traumatic events. And by the way, this can include even those that have occurred recently. Another example of selective amnesia is repetitive events. In other words, you struggle to remember repetitive events like daily tasks, daily activities. They're repetitive, they happen regularly, but you don't remember them. An example could be as an autistic person, you may forget daily tasks that need to be done, yet you probably don't have any trouble remembering about your special interests, your passions. Another example is around conversations. Do you struggle? Is it a real difficulty of yours to recall what was even said or spoken about in conversations, in recent conversations? I'm talking about, could you have a conversation with someone and then if someone asked you about it, seemingly forget who you were even talking to, what you were talking about, and when this little chit chat even took place. Another example, directions and navigation. <laughs> Who's up for this one? Struggling with remembering directions, which way to go, the, the route, the route, however you say it without it being <laughs> dirty. <laughs> Is it a challenge for you to navigate not only unfamiliar surroundings, but also familiar surroundings, even if you've been there before. Another example of selective amnesia around the whole idea of appointments, commitments. Now, autistic people who experience selective amnesia may often forget, I mean like completely forget booked appointments. I'm talking scheduled appointments. Just forget about them. Same goes for commitments, deadlines. Forgot, never registered is probably a better answer. How about names and faces? Yes. How about names and faces, you? <laughs> I don't know what their name is. Selective amnesia makes it really difficult to recall names and faces, to put a name to a face. And to be clear, I don't mean just new people. I mean people you've met before, people you know. Another example is around, yes, we're gonna talk about it, special occasions. You know, those kind of like special personal dates things you're supposed to remember apparently. Selective amnesia really has a major impact on your ability to remember these types of special dates, birthdays, anniversaries, even holidays. Schoolwork and learning, another example. This is simple. Struggling to retain information you have just learnt, whether it's in school or at work, is a core issue. And what happens then? You then seem like you're forcing yourself to repeatedly Try to relearn it, to revisit this information that you, you couldn't retain in the first place. Having to revisit topics multiple times might be sustainable in primary school, but it's not especially sustainable as you progress because then it just becomes this big, massive boulder of information that you've, you're trying to shove in. Believe it or not, autistic people who experience selective amnesia may in fact completely forget about their own personal achievements. They might have no recollection of anything they've really done that they're proud of, anything they've achieved, accomplished. Milestones, achievements, awards, things they're just proud of doing. No recollection. This happens to me so much. So I'm going to go, are you serious? 
Do you not know what you've achieved this year? What? It's, yeah, it's a really interesting situation. Another example is events with emotional significance. Family gatherings, celebrations, personal achievements, relationship events. These types of events can be absolutely riddled with memory gaps. Another example, sensory memories. Selective amnesia makes it hard to retain these types of sensory memories. So things like, my favorite drink tastes like the taste of that burger I had. I can't, you know, I can't connect it, I can't place it, I forget. Hang on a second, give me a second here, Let me work, let's work this out. What did that taste like? Could even be like the texture of a material you really liked. You can't recall these things. Health related stuff, medication, those kind of things. Another example of selective amnesia. Do you struggle to remember to take particular prescriptions, medications? Do you struggle to work out the dose, the timing? Just forget to take them. You may struggle to remember important health related information specific to you. But what about our special interests and passions? Surely this is immune from selective amnesia. Not so much. In fact, selective amnesia can actually make it difficult sometimes for autistic people to recall specific information about our passions, our special interests. So even though they are our passions, they are our thing, we may still struggle to recall specific pieces of information related to it. Like we're trying to, and it's just not there. I may be super passionate about a particular subject, but seem to be struggling to recall specific information about this subject I'm super passionate about. Social interaction, another example for you. Being part of social interactions is tricky for autistic people. So clearly there's a connection between experiencing that and selective amnesia. Do you have an experience as an autistic person of being a part of social interactions, but then failing to recall who was there again? I forget who I was talking to. What did we talk about? What was that? Who was that person? It's like you were there and you experienced it and it probably wasn't pleasurable but it's like it's completely been blanked out or you, you, you were in, unable to digest it, to process it, to remember it. Let's talk about practical skills. Basic things, right? Cooking your favorite meal. We're talking basic everyday practical skills that neurotypical people would say, everyone knows how to do that. Do you forget those particular skills to the things that others say but everyone knows how to do that. This happens to me all the time, to the point where I, I actually may need repeated instructions, repeated help, repeated guidance to complete these practical skills that I'm sure I've done before, but they're just not there. How do you do this again? The final example I'll give you before we talk about this specific connection more broadly to selective amnesia and autism. Let's talk about emotional episodes. So emotional episodes, we're talking about more intense things. This could be a super joyful experience, or it could be you had a meltdown or a shutdown. You became really dysregulated. High intensity emotional episodes. You experience them. People around you certainly don't forget them, but you do. You fail to recall them. Time to talk about how selective amnesia is actually connected to autism. The first connection is around sensory overload. As you know, autistic people experience sensory overload. Whether it's a hyper or hyposensitivity, autistic people definitely struggle with this. Our senses are basically overwhelmed by external stimuli. Now here's where it gets interesting. This constant bombardment of sensory overwhelm can sometimes lead to selective amnesia. How? Because our brain, in that instance, prioritizes processing the sensory information over storing memories. Another way selective amnesia is connected to autism is around emotional regulation. As autistic people, staying regulated in a world not built for us is a daily challenge, really a minute by minute challenge. And we absolutely can struggle to identify to process and to manifest, express the emotions we're feeling. This is a challenge. Well, in fact, our brain may actually selectively forget distressing emotional experiences as a coping mechanism to protect our well-being, to keep us regulated in this world not built for us. This can be beneficial, I guess, in preventing 
excessive emotional distress. However, it can also result in fragmented, incomplete memories. And while we're on the subject of the sensory overwhelm and the emotional overwhelm, emotional regulation, some research has actually shown that the sensory overwhelm, the emotional overwhelm regulation for autistic people can actually impact our memory processing. And this is a result of our overloaded sensory systems prioritizing sensory information over the retrieval, even encoding of memories. Our working memory, is another connection between selective amnesia and autism. Now it's not new information that autistic people can struggle with a working memory. What is that by the way, you may be asking. Working memory is basically an ability to hold and manipulate information. Working memory, it's, I think it's in general terms is a pretty universal struggle for autistic people. I'm sure you've worked this one out for yourself, but you can see how this is a problem, how this then connects us to experiencing selective amnesia. Because if we have a poor working memory, we'll clearly struggle to remember and process information in real time. Let's talk about our restrictive repetitive behaviors. That's one way of putting how autistic people live our lives, our passions, our special interests, our stims, the things that people think is repetitive and restrictive, the things that we do because they help us stay regulated at peace. Well, in basic terms, it's been suggested that in fact, in autistic people, thriving, focusing on these restricted repetitive behaviors, we are in fact influencing our memory and cognitive processing. Autistic people can be classed as sticklers, as real details people. I get stuck in the minutia of life. I like details. I like follow-up questions. <laughs> Any follow-up questions? Yes, I have some. Okay, well, the connection between autism and selective amnesia also is really interesting when we talk about our love of details, our attention to details. Some research has suggested that autistic people's tendency to pay attention to details, or put differently, autistic people's tendency to pay more attention to details than non-autistic people can actually influence our memory recall. We are more likely to remember specific details. However, we are more likely to miss broader contextual information. I don't know if this is an experience of you. Maybe you have an autistic person in your life. Do you sometimes go, how did you remember that? How do you remember those details? How, how do you even remember that's what I said or that's what happened? How is it possible, right? But then they have zero recollection of giant, big, what you would class as seemingly important events and scenarios in their life. There's these massive gaps and it's, so you think you must be bad at memory and then they give you specific details from 10 years ago. And that's a paradox. But it's also a great example. This focusing on the details gives us these amazing recalls for details, but the broader contextual memory information is limited, which feeds into the connection with selective amnesia. Autistic people have autistic brains. Neurotypical people have neurotypical brains. And there are others who are neither autistic nor neurotypical. Everyone experiences things differently. Here's another connection. Because autistic people experience the world around us differently, we experience things differently. What does that mean? So if we experience things differently, we respond to them differently. So our unique way of responding to things, to events, to emotions is and can be so different to non-autistic people that it actually influences how we actually remember emotional events. Our response to emotional events, to emotions, influences how we remember those emotional events. We're obviously talking about selective amnesia here. So there's lots of different memory tidbits to share with you. So we'll, let's talk about, let's put a couple together. So there's semantic memory and there's 
episodic memory. In some cases, autistic people can actually excel in specific aspects, domains of semantic memory. On the other hand, with episodic memory, which is basically recalling specific events and their specific details, so that particular episode, the memory of what happened then and there, again, manifests differently for autistic people. Our autistic brain, believe it or not, processes episodic memories differently. Wow, what? And this actually influences how we autistic people remember our personal experiences, remember and process episodic memories. Have you heard about perspective memory? As an autistic person, this may be a challenge for you. I'll tell you why. So perspective memory is basically the ability to remember to perform a planned activity in the future. This could be things like daily tasks, daily routines. And this is where the research has got absolutely nothing genuine to provide here. Because think about it like this, how bad sometimes can autistic people be, I'm talking about my own experiences here, in actually remembering to do these activities, these planned tasks in the future. Horrible. How good though are we at remembering to do our repetitive and restricted behaviors, our daily routines on a daily basis? Pretty good. It's a paradox again. And this paradox provides a connection. But what about the impact? Selective amnesia can have a significant impact on your life. It can affect relationships. If you fail or are unable to remember important moments, experiences, dates, anniversaries in relationships with your loved one, that's clearly going to have an impact on the relationship. Not only does it impact your connection, but it also actually blocks your ability to reminisce and share past memories. It can impact daily tasks. If you can't even remember the details of the daily tasks, the activities that need to be undertaken that you need to do, they're not gonna get done. You're gonna get frustrated. You're gonna get upset. You may be judged by others, punished by others. And that impacts just your general well-being of being able to live your life. Learning and education, big impact from selective amnesia. If you're unable to observe, process, and retain information you're learning through education, through schooling, you're forced then to work even harder to try and achieve what others have already achieved. In other words, you're using additional energy time and resources to relearn what you need to learn, what you didn't learn in the first place. There's also an impact on your self-identity. If you can't remember your own personal achievements, milestones, life events, memorable experiences, who are you then? What is your self-identity? Your esteem and confidence goes because, well, what am I to be proud of? I don't know. How about safety and health? If you don't remember the things that are important to survival, and that might be medications you need to take, medical allergies, safety precautions, things you're taught, whether in the workplace, at home or in school, to keep safe, you can't remember these things. This doesn't go well for your ability to maintain a healthy life. Selective amnesia affects your career your very performance in the workplace. It's all about productivity, meetings, tasks, deadlines, information. If you can't recall this and remember this, you're going to be a failure in the workplace. Planning and future goals, another one. See, selective amnesia can actually affect your ability to plan for the future, set goals, make informed decisions based on past experiences you don't remember. We've talked about social interactions. Basically, you have these things and there's no real recollection of who I was talking to, what I was talking about, where we were, what was going on, who was that person, right? Okay, but now let's talk about the impact of that. What do you think is gonna happen? The neurotypical world will see you as not a very good friend. It's hard enough to get friends. In this situation, it's like you lose all connection. You have no meaningful relationships or interactions, which leads to another impact, which is your own emotional well-being. If you can't remember past emotional experiences, you can't remember past emotional coping mechanisms. You can't remember how you navigated it and got through it. So it's just a vicious cycle that never ends. It's almost like you can't learn from past experiences because you can't remember what you learnt, what you did. Also not great in the whole 
legal or financial world, <laughs> if you are actually unable to remember basic things, you may have debts or bills or legal requirements. If you can't retain these and adhere to these, the ramifications can be quite big. You can jump to the next one. When we talk about these types of things, usually it's in some sort of environment of a family or a group of people. Again, if you're going to forget about their needs, things that are special to them, that's going to strain that connection and that relationship. So everything flows on to another impact. So we understand that it can be really tricky to navigate, right? Directions, remembering to, how to get to places I've been to before, where to go here, how to follow these directions. They're clear challenges. But what's the impact of that? I think the first one people don't talk about is anxiety. I don't know about you, but a lot of autistic people, I bet, that drive would be riddled with anxiety. Not all, and there's many reasons for that. This is one of the reasons. It all, it's a stress. Nothing's predictable. And you can't even remember the things that should be predictable, like landmarks and the way you usually go. Maybe you're late to things all the time, right? Maybe you just quit and give up. Either way, it's not helpful for you. Selective amnesia can impact problem solving. Simply put, if you can't remember how you solved problems, how you navigated difficulties in the past, how can you use them when they pop up again in the future? You can't. Adhering to instructions, this can also be a big impact. So you might not be able to recall specific instructions, rules, guidelines, however you want to put it. Therefore, you can't actually follow them. You don't have the ability to adhere to them. This could be anything, tasks, work assignments, even commitments. Lifelong milestones may be forgotten. They may be forgotten and not celebrated, or they may be forgotten and missed completely. Birthdays, anniversaries, graduations, promotions. If you forget about these things, you don't get a chance to celebrate them again with the people that want to celebrate them with you, or you might actually forget about some of these things and not even get to experience them. <laughs> you might not have had a celebration or a particular experience related to it. That's a big cost. Where's your self-esteem, your self-confidence, your ability to actually enjoy your own experiences, to have some shred of love for yourself? The safe people in the lives of autistic people are very important, crucial, critical. We rely on these people, but we may struggle to remember important things to them. Memories linked to our loved ones, our safe people, just haven't stored, don't recall. And see, this breaks down bonds. And that's an issue because, you know, maintaining a strong bond with your loved ones, your safe people is critical for both sides. So this is an impact. It's not something we do purposely, but it's a big impact. And hopefully it may be an insight into it's not something we're purposely doing. I have got some key strategies now, my friends, for you autistic people or for you, the loved one, of an autistic person to help yourself or them navigate through this experience of selective amnesia. Tip number one, have you tried journaling of any kind? Journaling, reflecting. Huh, that sounds boring. Now hang on, I'm being more specific, please. So encourage the autistic person in your life one way or another. It could be writing, it could be dictating, recording a video, painting, whatever works for them. Encourage them on a daily basis to simply record important events, emotions, things that have occurred that they would like to document so they can reflect back, they can remember, or they can trigger a memory. You're basically building a bridge, right? A bridge over the gap of recalling memories. Another tip, visual aids can really help, okay? Now we talk about different things to help autistic people, and they're all very similar with regards to these types of visual prompts because they help, they work. Having things around could be photos, right? Or pictures, like as in a painting or something of a, of a place or an area. Personal videos, drawings, anything visual that could help the autistic person in your life trigger memories, recall memories. You see it and you go, wow, that, I remember that. And then, right, and then they unlock a memory. Another great way of doing it. Have you explored memory apps, by the way? I mean, this is not something that I'm an expert in, but for those that love apps, 
that love like device related your tips and strategies, you know, memory apps can be really helpful too. And well, that's because they're made to help with memory. So you could explore that as well. Another key strategy to help navigate through selective amnesia is actually about routines, rituals, structure. Autistic people actually love daily routines, right? Plans, sameness. So I'm saying use this to your advantage or use this to the advantage of the autistic person in your life by implementing and adhering to daily routines, daily rituals, structure. It actually helps you organize and remember important tasks, even important events, upcoming things that need to be done. Another key strategy for really autistic people in any respect, and I'll keep saying this over and over because some people just glaze over, is this kind of practice of mindfulness or meditation, again, I know what you're thinking. Okay, I'm not talking about like, you know, this kind of hardcore high-end stuff that just seems crazy to an autistic brain. I totally get it. At its basic core, mindfulness is about allowing yourself to just be. What am I doing now? So if you're eating, it's about focusing on just eating. How do you expect your memory to be healthy if while you're eating lunch, there's like what you've got the TV on, Plus you're going scrolling through social media and stuff on your phone and you're potentially doing another task as well. You're literally using every possible part of your brain when you could just be eating. And in just eating, in just showering, in just doing a thing, you're allowing your brain, your memory to work at a level you probably have never allowed it to work before. Meditation is the same, just like just like being present. It doesn't have to be excessive. It just means be. Just sit down and just be, and there's no rules. Have your thoughts. Don't judge them, don't talk about them, just be. This helps your brain, it unwinds your brain. It's really critical for autistic people, in my opinion. Another tip I'll give you is about association techniques. Does that make sense? So you're associating one thing to a new thing. You're associating a thing as a link to a new bit of information. In other words, new information linked, associated to something familiar or concepts or cues, things you understand, right? That therefore help you link and unlock that new information. You might like memory games. Some people love memory games. Some people like playing card games and different types of puzzles and, and you know, the stuff like on paper and devices. Again, you have to look at it like this. And this, you can think, oh, this sounds a bit weird or generic. It's actually not. It's a bit like saying, you know, welcome to my video on how to be more fit. Tip number one, exercise. It's like, well, that's a bit generic. It's like, well, no, it's, that's the point. <laughs> that is the point. You have to exercise your brain if you want to help it in its perilous journey of remembering something. Maintaining social support, a social circle, another key strategy to unlocking your memory for autistic people to in effect navigate social amnesia. When you share stories, experiences, the company of your safe people, it creates conversations that unlock memories, that build on memories. This is important. I also find, you know, your safe people are the best people to remind you of things that you wanna remember, that you wanna talk about. They really help with the retrieval, the nudging of reminders, which is really cool. Another strategy you might wanna use, or at least try out, is multi-sensory learning. Have you tried this before? All right, so you know we have the senses, right? But when you learn, what do you use? Do you use all the senses? Could you learn in a way utilizing more than one or two? What ones work best for you? That's another question. In other words, find the array of senses that you learn best in and then use those when you're acquiring new information, when you are in new experiences. So uh, pay attention, use what's right. Does that make sense? Utilizing multi-sensory learning can actually improve your memory retention. It's always great to hear from you, get your comments, feedback and topic suggestions. So do you have an idea for an upcoming video? I'd love to hear it put it in the comments below. Until my next video, thank you so much for your support. We'll talk soon.